Welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm David Rhodes and we're here at the Guardian Center's Highway Tunnel where we have a multi, multi-car pileup. I'm joined with Jamie Brads from Spec Rescue. How you doing, Jamie? Very well, sir, today. Good to How see you? you. Good to see you again. All right, tell us a little bit about what we have. We have a simulated highway tunnel here, so it's a restricted area with vehicles that were traveling in both directions. Uh, we have multiple pileups throughout the tunnel and this is several thousand feet long, this tunnel is. And uh, the scenario that we're going to be working through is uh, uh, not necessarily an extrication or a vehicle problem, but just dealing with a non-ambulatory patient when you're working through something like this, when you have all this debris in the way, and how do you get them out? So if we were on the highway, this would be a pretty simple operation. We would just get the patient up on the stretcher, put them in the ambulance, and off they would go. Yes, sir. But here we have thousands of feet to navigate with probably 100 wrecked cars. Absolutely. And again, there's really no easy access. Some of it's going to be pretty straightforward, maybe some pretty long stretches where we can just walk the patient uh, in a Stokes basket out. Uh, or even put them on a wheel if we had that, kind of like a wilderness scenario. But then you get into the position where there are obstacles that you cannot just overcome, and you're going to have to come up with a different way to take care of that patient. So we're going to use some typical equipment we'd find on a fire apparatus and roll with that. Yes, sir. We're going to use our first responding uh, truck company to, to take care of what they have on their truck to get this patient out. All right, let's see how it rolls. All right, so our rescuers are going in and checking out the situation and coming up with a plan. They've had to walk an awfully long distance to get down in here, so they brought minimal equipment, but enough stuff to make sure that they had enough to do the job. So tell us a little bit about what we gotta be concerned with. Well, basically with a non-ambulatory patient, they're gonna package them, uh, of course, correctly, but when they place this patient in the Stokes basket, they're gonna prepare that patient for a long haul kind of similar to what you might do if you had a down hiker on a trail in the wilderness or something. It's going to be a long journey to get them out of here. So you want to make sure that all the straps are secure, they're tied down good in a Stokes basket because there's going to be a lot of up and down movement and we don't want that patient to be able to, to move inside the, uh, the harnesses. Yes, sir. We, we do not anticipate any kind of vertical lift or anything like that, uh, but we do want this uh, patient as secure as possible on the spine board and uh, within the Stokes itself. And that's not only best for the patient, but it also makes it easier for the rescuers when they're not having to tend a patient moving around. It, it does, and it keeps the patient from shifting weight so that they don't lose uh, their grip on the Stokes or anything like that. All right, Jamie, now we've moved over to just a traditional rescue basket. Gives us some good stability and something to hold on to as we move through. It'd be very difficult just to carry that backboard the distance we have to go. Absolutely. It they, uh, basically has a, a simple cross lasting system, but it's very secure for this horizontal movement and the over obstacles movement that they're going to have to make. And that system's pre-rigged already on the basket, correct? With this particular model. With what they're doing now is uh, they have fashioned up some webbing slings so that instead of just hand carrying the basket, they know they've got to go a long distance. They're going to position themselves in four corners and they're going to clip the carabiner into the rail of the basket so that the harness basically or the shoulder strap basically is going to carry the weight of the patient instead of just their hand. So instead of just using that tricep and, and that muscle in the arm, a little bit of shoulder, they're going to distribute that weight out across their they whole sure torso. Are. So when the guys have a lot of clear ground to cover, they can use those makeshift straps that they fashioned up from a few seat belts out of the cars they got? Yes, sir. Seat belts, webbing, prusset cords, anything the guys can come up with. Uh, these guys fashioned these out of a uh, stuff that was readily available to them. It makes it a lot easier for them to carry them a long distance. All right, now we're coming to our first obstacle. Yeah, they're gonna just set the stokes down and take the straps off, probably just lay them into the basket in case they need them again. They're gonna just lift the legs up, put them on the bed of this truck. It's got a bed liner, so it should slide pretty easily. As they secure that, a couple of guys are gonna transition around to grab a hold of the feet basically the same position that they were working in before. As they, as they take control of the feet, they're just going to slide it till it's secure, 
and hold it in position until the, the rest of the team can traverse the obstacle. Once they have all hands in position, they're just going to utilize the, the vehicle until they can get everybody back in the same position they were in. The so it's a little work there. smarter, not harder. Absolutely. All right, now we're coming up on our second obstacle. Our crew came in this way, so they already knew they had their ladder and some other equipment, and they left it here. So what are they going to do here? So basically what they're going to do, they're going to utilize a ladder so that they can use it as a long or a lever. Uh, they're going to attach the Stokes basket to it, just a simple attachment with a, a ratchet strap, a two-inch uh, heavy-duty ratchet strap. They're going to uh, ratchet the Stokes to it so that they can put it up on the pile and slide it over. Note that they're uh, taking caution not to uh, put the ratchet strap material anywhere where it's going to hang up or be a uh, rub uh, problem. And we're going to find these like in our vehicle stabilization kit. Oh, yes. Ratchet straps there. Mm -hmm. So with the amount of extrications that's going on here, probably going to be plenty of those on the oh, thing. Oh, absolutely. And one thing interesting about this segment is these aren't necessarily techniques that you go take and find in a textbook or in a class. And one of the reasons we wanted to show it is just the adaptability of the equipment that you have and the ingenuity of the firefighters and, and just taking different principles that you've learned in different technical rescue or rescue systems or um, even just basic uh, RIT classes. Exactly. Because we do a firefighter carry on a ladder. Yeah, this is not unlike uh, techniques that we've used in RIT training that you and I both have participated in when we used it with a downed firefighter. We've just adapted this with a Stokes basket for this long carry and over obstacles scenario. Again, just like you said, utilizing what we have on our trucks in an unconventional way. And if we didn't have something like that and be working a little bit smarter, we'd have really had a tough time trying to negotiate that basket up and over. It would have been a whole lot of... Uh, guys on top lifting, guys on bottom pushing versus using the, the length of the ladder as a lever. And we still got a long way to go. We still got a long way to go. All right, so we're in the highway tunnel. We set up a little course, kind of an O course almost, for them to negotiate with a patient. And it's important to remember when you're doing any type of training for your members, let them be creative, let them use some techniques that maybe they've learned in some other classes, whether it was technical rescue or RIT, and develop something that makes them be adaptable. Thank you for joining us on Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm David Rhodes, here with Jamie Brad. 